News tonight in the search for a murder suspect. Right now, Columbus police need your help finding this man. Take a good look at your screen. We've just learned his name. This is Shamir Franklin. He's a second suspect in connection with that deadly shooting near OSU's campus. The shooting happened early this morning, just yards away from the union. Just hours after that gunfire, police nabbed one suspect, Raymond Ladd. He is now charged with murder. Tonight, 10 TV's Lindsay Mills is learning much more about the victim in this case and how he will be remembered. <laughs> they shoot up at Ohio State. Oh my God, man. She picks up our coverage live tonight on North High Street where that shooting happened. Lindsay. Andrew, yes, behind me is where 25 year old Deshaun Goodbed was, but Bedgood rather, was shot and killed. We've learned today that he worked at a tap room just a, a few blocks away from here, and that tap room is now closed tonight and through the weekend as his friends and co-workers grieve. Can't wrap our minds around that. Uh, we're pretty gutted right now. Ryan Lazier coached Dejon Bedgood when he played basketball at Bell Pre High School. By far one of the most athletic uh, athletes I've ever seen uh, come through our area. Bedgood was killed Friday morning in a shooting near the Ohio State campus. And to see that, hear this news is, 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 is pretty uh, heartbreaking. He worked as a manager at 4th Street Tap Room and Kitchen. His co-manager says he was loved by his co-workers. In a statement on Instagram, the Tap Room posted it will remain closed until Tuesday, April 25th, in an effort to prioritize the well-being of our staff and employees. Wow, they really love that guy. They closed him down to April 25th in honor of that guy, man. That's the whole weekend, man. This is the money time right here, man. God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Not just that, but that means no money for the waitress, the bartender. But they said everybody's Server. fucked up, so they probably wouldn't be able to do their jobs right, man. So, you know what I'm saying? They probably, they probably heads in a fog, you know, like, they kind of like, bruh, early, and I was like, huh, what? So he just walked in and killed him? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, people can't believe this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people, can't, people, normal people that probably don't watch this channel, they can't, like, what? He killed, he killed um, Brian or whatever the fuck his name was. He got shot? How the fuck he get shot? In a statement on Instagram, the tap room posted it will remain closed until Tuesday, April 25th, in an effort to prioritize the well-being of our staff and employees. He was described as someone with a lot of energy and a calming presence, a former student athlete who left behind a legacy at Belpre High School. One of the best athletes to come through our school history by far. And that tap room, as I mentioned, is going to remain closed through the weekend. That includes canceling a beer festival that they had scheduled. Live near campus, Lindsay Mills, 10 TV News. We say three people call. Christ. Breaking news tonight in the search. Um. God. Um. TV news at noon begins with breaking news about a deadly shooting. We have some details. Hours ago, Columbus police say they have arrested one of the two men accused in a deadly shooting that happened right across the street from the Ohio State University. Police believe the man on your left, on the screen of your left side, is 26-year-old Raymond Ladd. They say he's in custody facing murder charges. Look at the picture on your right, though. Columbus police say they need your help finding this man, the second suspect. Thank you so much for joining us for 10TV News at Noon today. I'm Tracy Townsend. Police say one man was killed and another injured. This all happened at around 2 o'clock this morning at the corner of 12th and High Street. That area was closed for hours as police worked their investigation. 10TV News reporter Kevin Landers was there as police took down the crime scene tape. One person was shot and killed. One person was injured just steps away from the Ohio Union. Behind me is the crime scene, and police say it happened probably between the Waffle House and Blaze Pizza. Let's take you to some video from earlier this morning. <sighs> Shit, man. Not the Waffle House. Yeah, man. Oh, God. 
also new at noon. Just hours ago, we learned the name of the 18-year-old accused of shooting and killing two others in East Columbus. <laughs> this is literally the last day and a half in Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. This is not the cold country. This is not the whole state of Ohio. This is just Columbus. All three. Four, four murders. <laughs> I mean, a cold blooded joints too, man. Like, ugh. also new at noon, just hours ago, we learned the name of the 18 year old accused of shooting and killing two others in East Columbus. Police were able to arrest. Kayon Drake nearly nine hours after that shooting was reported. Here's what police say happened. They got a call of a shooting just before nine last night near East 11th and Rarig Avenues. Police say they found 19 year old Antoine Moss Jr. and 16 year old Mossy. They found Mossy. Not Mossy. Mossy that, that's impossible. Yeah. Mossy would have shot him with his fucking revolvers. Yeah, Mossy, 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 never go. This is another Mossy, man. The Avenues. Police said they found 19-year-old Antoine Moss Jr. and 16-year-old Jeremy Hagel with gunshot wounds. The two later died at the hospital. A third 16-year-old girl was also listed as another victim. Yeah, my man caught two bodies. Whew. Franklin County court records show Hagler pulled up to a house to sell drugs. At some point, Moss got into the back seat of the car and that's when the shots were fired. Oh, Hagler. Hagler sounds like a glider, man. Doesn't he? Drug rip. Glider pulled up in the projects to sell some weed. I, listen, man. I thought I, I thought I was very clear about that. <laughs> On several occasions. Have I, Wiki, have I, have I not been clear about that? Hell yeah. I mean, I've been. Don't listen, do it. Leave it alone. Listen, man. Don't do it, man. Show Hegler pulled up to a house to sell drugs. At some point, Moss got into the back seat of the car, and that's when the shots were fired. Police wrote in the affidavit that Hegler fired back, shooting and killing Moss and injuring Drake. Reports say that's when Drake ran. Police later found him and arrested him. Kayon Drake now charged with two counts of murder. Maybe, All new tonight at five. Investigate. Well, Hagler busted back. Maybe he was. I don't know. I'm just, just stay away, man. Um, <laughs> stay away. Man. Stay away, man. Get out from around me. <laughs> hey, what was that movie I Get out? Yeah, exactly, man. Um, Police. Now, the shooting comes after several deadly shootings in the past 72 hours. Since Tuesday night, four people have died across the city. For Crime Tracker 10 tonight, 10 TV's Richard Solomon is taking a look at the number of homicides this year compared to other years. He's live in studio tonight with the details. Richard. Andrew, according to data from the city, we've already passed the number of homicides compared to this time last year. I spoke with people who fear it'll only get worse before it gets better. Too many times, this has been a reality for a lot of us. Flashing lights, followed by a horrific phone call to loved ones. I mean, the numbers is just what becomes frustrating, and then it becomes also not just frustrating, but a concern as well. Too many times, Stu Hampton, a Linden community activist and founder of Linden Community Engagement Resource Team, says ends the same way. Things is going to still be bad, but things can be better if people learn how to come out and learn how to talk. This past week, there were three deadly shootings. The victims, as old as 25 and as young as 16. According to information given to me by Columbus Police, there are 51 homicides to date. This time last year, we were at 33 homicides. But in 2021, when Columbus set the record for homicides in a single year, the number at this time was at 60. Just look at that, man. Columbus. By April 21st, <laughs> Columbus, 
I mean, why do why do fucking 65, 50 people, whatever the fuck, need to be killed in Columbus by April 21st? I mean, like, that's a lot of fucking people, man. 55. These are not just random acts of violence, unfortunately. And boom, Chief Elaine Bright. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> But it's not her fault. Bro. But it's just this is just a symptom. This is it's, it's not her symptom, fault. Yeah. It's it's, not I, her I fault. think it's an important symptom. Yeah. Yes, she can't do anything about this. But I mean, it's just it speaks volumes, though. No, she can't. She cannot. But I'm sure she's not helping. If she's not making it worse. Yeah, she's definitely not helping. She doesn't help at all. She yeah. She and she probably does make it worse. These are not just random acts of violence. Unfortunately, a lot of the victims are known to each other as suspects. We spoke with CPD Chief of Police Elaine Bryant. She says one of the major goals this summer is working on several safety measures, as well as bringing back the Safe Streets Initiative. That increases police presence around the city to prevent violence. It used to be a time when you would get into a fight, you'd live to see another day. Now people get upset and they're pulling guns and they're shooting. For, for very senseless acts. So that's something that we're concerned about, but the community should be concerned about as well. She says preventing crime is not just on police, and Hampton agrees. If community leaders, community residents, learn how to just come, in a, um, come together, adapt to these kids, you know, rather than just judging them when you see them. Oh my God, there's no solutions, man. There's no fucking solutions. Wow. Wow. 